we try to add higher magnesium bioavailable foods more, that is our starting place, but we're probably going to add supplements on top of that in addition because you just it's just hard to get there. You got to be careful with this a little bit though because if you were to look at your magnesium levels in like a classic blood draw, that's a terrible place to look. Uh, the magnesium that comes on your blood work that you get is not an indicative of all of what's actually happening in your body. The vast majority of it's going to be stored in bone anyways, and it's super transient. And now there's, there's good information you can get there, and there's other ways you can look at it, markers of it. But I always like to flag that because people get really freaked out. They go in for blood work for whatever reason. They see that, and they're like, oh, I'm super high. I don't need it. Like, no, like that's not a good way to interpret your overall magnesium status. We can talk more about that. But in general, because of those things, we end up adding magnesium is, is one of our top line micronutrients to pay attention to. So I'll go on for more, but I'll stop on magnesium if you yeah. want to talk more about yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's... I know you're a fan. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the plasma levels of magnesium, which is mostly what's being measured in a yeah. standard test, I guess you would get from like a routine physical or something like that. Yeah, you pull it out from your bones and... and and really, um, it's 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 kind of like this. Your bones are this reservoir, and by the time someone reaches older age, so like fifty percent of their magnesium has been taken out of their bones. I mean, it's incredible, and it plays a role in osteoporosis. A huge role. But people aren't really focused on that as much. Um, yeah. So about if, if half the country isn't, as you mentioned, depends on the paper that you're reading and what you know what's being defined as magnesium insufficiency. Most of the time, it's looking at what the RDA is. Yeah. yeah. So for women, it's about 320 milligrams per day. For men, about 420 milligrams per day. And so people aren't meeting that requirement. And so they're con considered to be getting insufficient magnesium. And so you're talking about half the country, basically. So you've got a one in two chance of whatever athlete that walks into your door, eh, they might be not getting enough, right? So that's kind of, I, th I would say that it, it's good insurance. But then, as you mentioned, you know, these athletes are sweating magnesium. They're breaking down tissue. Um, they're, you know, urinating more. I mean, there's lots of like, it's coming out, it's coming out. And so they can require up to 10 to 20% more than the RDA. And so if they're not even meeting that RDA, um, it makes sense to supplement. Now I've heard you talk about different magnesium supplements, like mag magnesium citrate being, yep. being one that, um, is often preferred for recovery. You, uh, magnesium source is different. Uh, back when we were kids, you had to be really on top of this. Uh, because of ineffective forms of magnesium and because of GI distress. Most supplement companies have cleaned that up. So now you can look at uh, bisglycinate is, is a really common mm -hmm. one. That is fine. Citrate's fine. Obviously, three and eights become more popular now. Any of those are generally okay.